Hi, and welcome to Why Is Your Dog Sick, episode one. Today we're going to focus on dog food. Last week we did our introduction. This is our girl Stormy right here. She's almost five years old. Hi, Stormy. So, as you can see behind me, I have two of the same dog foods. And I just wanted to touch base on the definitions of each. You have commercial dog food, natural dog food, holistic dog food, and organic dog food. Commercial dog food is just your general dog food that you can find at your grocery store or pet food store. Natural dog food does not mean anything special. Um, it's just saying natural because they want it to seem a little bit better than a commercial dog food. Holistic dog food, on the other hand, is human grade ingredients. That means they can't put into this food anything that we can't consume ourselves. Organic dog food is the same as going to the grocery store and having organic produce and regular produce. So you're not going to have the pesticides, etc. in the food. So depending on your pet, you can choose which kind of food you want to feed. Of course, I would say go organic if you don't have a lot of pets or a large pet because it does get pretty pricey. These dog foods are less than $50 per bag, so no different than a commercial dog food that you would buy every day for your pet. So when you're considering foods, this is a great idea. Also, the number one thing you want to stay away from in any dog food is corn. Corn is really bad for them and usually causes most of your allergies and your skin issues, including dry skin, ear infections, uh, mange, etc. So now I've also found that grain-free holistic dog food is the way to go. Um, I've gone grain-free with mine and we've gotten rid of any other issues we might have had. My dogs completely blew their coat again when they switched to grain-free. So Earthborn is a great dog food that I'm currently feeding for the price, because I have three large dogs. Pr uh, Nature's Variety or Prairie grain-free dog food is also a great choice. They used to be on Nature's Variety before Earthborn. So if you wanted to do the grain-free Nature's Variety, I would highly recommend that as my second choice, but it is about $70 per bag. Now the good thing is, you can find these foods now at Petco, PetSmart. Um, if you can't find them there, then you can go to your local feed store, um, usually places that have horse food, hay, etc. Have dog food as well, and they bring in uh, all of these kinds of dog foods or Wagon Wash if you have it close to you. I go to Wagon Wash because it's close by me. I used to go to a feed store in every other house that I lived in. So the nice thing about the feed store and Wagon Wash is that you'll buy 10 and get one free. It's a very good incentive to switch. It also gives you basically about $5 off per bag. So you're getting it for even less than your commercial dog food. So now let's look at the back because I want to explain what the ingredients on a dog food means. So Argus is on the Great Plains Feast, which is bison, peas, and this will mean that these are the majority of the food. So you want to pay special attention to this. Number one, with any food, you want to make sure meat is number one. It can be meal, that just means it's mashed up meat and bones, which is fine. So it can be uh, shredded chicken, it can be anything that's basically saying it's meat of some sort. Now, my girls I have on, it's primitive natural, and their main ingredients are turkey, chicken, whitefish, so we've got a lot more meat going on here, and then potatoes, etc. There is no grain in either of these foods, um, potatoes, any of your blueberries, apples, all of these things they would normally get in the wild when they're eating their prey because it's in their stomachs. So these are things that are okay for them to get, but some dogs have a problem with yeast, which potatoes, carrots, apples can create more of. So you have to look at each pet individually to see what might be affecting them. Argus, my boy, is on the bison because I have found now that he has a sensitivity to chicken. So I'm afraid he might also have that with the turkey, but it also has chicken in it. So he's on this, but I found my girl Stormy is extremely allergic to the peas. <laughs> so I had to get 
purr on a different food. And when I switched all of them over, they blew their coats and now they're completely fine and healthy and, you know, we're doing even better than we were before. So, you know, there's different things that you need to do when you're trying to find the perfect food and don't be afraid to switch foods. If you notice that your pet's having a sensitivity, you're going to see it right away. Their skin's going to scrunch up. If you pet them, they're going to kind of cringe in that area. They'll start scratching. A big sign of pets having an issue and an allergy is when they're scratching their armpit. So if they're sitting on their butt and they're scratching at the back of their front leg, um, it usually starts in their armpits. Also on the heel of their of their foot, like right behind the pad on their foot, they'll start getting redness. Usually that'll be why they lick their feet all the time is because it starts getting sensitive and itchy from the food. And it, the food basically has to have a way to escape. So the food creates yeast in their system, which then has to come out. And demodectric mange is already in every pet. So once you start having a buildup of yeast from corn, grain, potatoes, carrots, apples, then people start, I'm sorry, the dogs start, um, their system starts to attack the yeast, then ignoring the mites that are already in their system, which then creates these mice, mites to come out into their skin and causes sores, itchiness, dryness, ear infections, etc. So when you go to the vet and say, my dog's sick with ABC, they'll give you medications to try to help fix those surface issues, but you can never fix them without actually fixing the underlying cause, which is their food. So their number one source of food is going to be their daily dog food. So you have to look at that first, as well as taking care of um, the issues that they might be having. So if a pet is on antibiotics, if they are on prednisone, switch the food, and gradually take them off of those antibiotics because if they're on a very heavy dose, you don't want to just stop it all of a sudden. Um, a lot of pets that are severely, severely sick actually go through a couple, like a whole day of just very, very ill. They can throw up. Um, they have a lot of runny stool covered in mucus and that's very normal. And they're usually down for a day, not feeling well, but the next day they, they turn around and they're just doing great. So don't be afraid if they do get sick. The purpose of this is to enable those animals to get better because I can't see any of them really getting better without fixing the issue in the first place and then they'll continually be on medications which is not good for anybody to have to constantly pay money to put them on those things. There's also the option of raw which we'll get into a little bit. Um, I will look at that next week and see about showing a little bit of mixing raw and I usually just mix it now with a little bit of kibble like I said to make sure that they have something in their system you know, I had my girl Chassie on uh, raw for about six to nine months before I finally said, you know, she needs something more because she would get sick every night and she would throw up bile, which I found out is because they're hungry. So um, it's good to just see what's best for you and find out what's best for your pet. If you have time for raw, then I say go for it. That's your best option. Um, it is a little time consuming though. And there are barf books, B-A-R-F out there that will explain in more depth of what to do with raw. So remember, what you don't know can hurt you, but what you do know can save your pet's life. Till next Sunday.